Rightio, in this step, we're going to add a new camera to the scene and we're going to create a new camera movement, which is actually the one that we're going to render. We're going to create something that's slightly more advanced and dynamic. And to do that, we're going to add a nicer camera, a more advanced camera that gives us more control. Right. So to do that, we're in the perspective view. We're going to go to create cameras and this time we're going to choose camera and aim. So if I do that, and then I'm just going to switch my move tool and move the camera out of the floor. And if I just frame that up, you can see that now, here's the camera just like the previous camera that we used. But this time we've got this little thing over here. What is that? Well, that is the aim. So where with the previous camera, to get it to rotate, we had to rotate the camera. This time, if I move the camera up and down, you can see that it aims at that little dot, which is really useful. So it's actually the rotation value has been con controlled by the aim. Same goes for this one. If I move the aim up and down, the camera stays stationary, but it is rotating to follow the aim, which again is really useful. The way I think of these cameras as working is if you imagine you're playing a first person shooter, moving the camera represents the, the left thumbstick. So that's kind of your position and the aim represents the right thumbstick, which is what you're looking at or what you're pointing your gun at. So you can keyframe both the camera and the aim to get a more dynamic shot, which is what we'll go for now. So let's get this set up this time. I want to be able to see through this camera. So instead of shot cam, I'm gonna click on panels, perspective, and I'm not gonna rename this one. I'll just be a little bit lazy. And I'm just gonna leave it called camera one. And what I want to do now is set up um, this shot. It's going to be a similar shot to the last one, but it's going to be more better. -er. Do you hear me? Better. -er. So, let's do that. Click on the camera. So I'm going to leave the aim where it is for the moment, and I'm just going to move the camera. Hello, I'm going to try to. I'm just going to move the camera back into that back corner of the room. And I just want to make sure that I'm happy with the, the height of the camera as well. So I'm going to put that about there. And then I'm going to get the aim. So I'll select that and I'm going to put that where I want it. So I want that to be kind of focusing on the uh, the projector. I'm going to move it down as well. So it's looking at the screen. Why am I having it look at the screen? Because I spent all that time putting the animated texture on it and I would like to show it off in my final render. So that is my first position. So let's set some keyframes on that. So I'm going to click on my camera and I'm going to press S, making sure I'm on frame one, of course. And then I'm going to click on the aim. So I just clicked on that line there to get the aim, because if I'd have just tried to click on the aim and it's in the middle of all this nonsense here, I, I would have clicked something else. So I just clicked on this line and that will give me the aim and I'll press S. So that's the start position set. So now let's move to frame 200. And then I'm going to click the camera first of all move this along the back wall so that it's in a similar position to the last camera and then I'm going to press S and at that stage if I move you'll see that I've got a really similar camera shot to what I had going on with the with the shot cam but there's obviously a bit of a flaw with this shot and you can see whilst I am showing off that sexy animated texture which is nice but now we can't see that the planets are animated what an idiot. So what we'll do is we'll click on the aim. Or we'll try to. There we go. And then on frame 200, what I'm going to do is move the aim up. So that it's looking pretty much at the center of the sun. Like that. So that should be a much nicer looking shot when I press S to set the second keyframe. So let's just make this full screen and then we'll play that and see what it looks like so over time the camera's also looking up following the aim and it ends looking on the solar system I think that looks much better don't you of course you do it's a stupid question okay stop and the next step we'll look at how you actually export your animation from Maya to a beautiful rendered sequence and we'll do that through a process called batch rendering 